Today we would like to move into the concept of refracting surfaces that are not flat. Up till now we've talked about refraction at a flat surface, and that's a somewhat simpler case of a surface that in general is curved. Just like we did with mirrors, we went from a transition where we were talking about flat mirrors to a, a situation where we are talking about mirrors that have a curvature or a, a bending out or a bending in. And we will see that this is the first step, the first baby step toward talking about lenses. Lenses, after all, are just a refracting object, like a piece of glass, that has two surfaces, a front and a back. And we need to take this in baby steps. So we'll do a single refracting surface initially, and then we will work up to the case of two refracting surfaces. The good news is there are not too many equations to learn here. So let me write them all down once, and then we'll have to refer back to them multiple times. The first equation I want us to know is if I have light coming in from an object and it's refracting at a spherical surface and then creates an image someplace, there is a relationship between the object distance P, the image distance I, the index of refraction of the material that I'm coming from, where the object is located, the image excuse me, the index of refraction of where I'm, the light is going to, in other words, the uh, index of this material that I'm c going into with the light, and the radius of curvature of this refracting surface. So I might have some ball here, some little image, excuse me, some little object located distance p, and the light is refracting, and it creates an image over here. So the radius of curvature of that spherical surface, the object distance p, the image distance i, all of those are related and connected through the index refraction. We'll go in through the explanation of that equation quite a bit more in the future, so don't worry if it doesn't make exact sense right now. The second equation I want us to know is when we have not one but two surfaces and we make something like a lens, there is a relationship between the object distance p, or one over it, the image distance i, and what's called the focal length. For a lens, the focal length is something that we can calculate. It's a little bit like the equation we had for a mirror, maybe a little bit more complicated. A lens has two radii of curvature because there's two surfaces and they may not have the same degree to which they're bulged out or bulged in for that matter because some lenses are kind of pushed in. And so each radius of curvature for the two surfaces here will matter and the index of refraction of this lens will matter. And one over the focal length of the mirror is related to this expression here, n minus one, one over r1 minus one over r2. And we will get lots of practice getting a sense of what's a big focal length and what's a small focal length and what a focal length for a, a lens really means. We've seen what focal length for a mirror is already. Let's get some practice now using these equations. <laughs> 